Sports shoe sales are a $13 billion business in this country alone. And the vast majority of those 350 million or so pair that are sold every year are what you and I might call running shoes. Now, whether they're made by Nike, Adidas, New Balance, Under Armour, or whatever, they all have, in recent years, been offered with ever-increasing amounts of padding, cushioning, and support. Yet today, a growing number of running enthusiasts are turning to shoes with little or no padding at all, and some are even running barefoot. To explain why, here's our Bernard Gold. I like Nike and like Vans, specifically the slip on. The Adidas Cloud Foam. Grade A cushion. They're gray and black. I also have the Adidas Cloud Foam. Mine are white and gray. They're really comfy inside and they get me going places. You know, the creation of shoes was for a very simple reason. It was to protect our feet against elements that would damage them. Every time I step outdoors, I am always have my Vans or my Nikes on, um, sometimes my Adidas. Whenever I step outside, I'm always wearing these handy dandy dress shoes. I like getting them polished every once in a while. Uh, they're really, they're really nice. I'm actually a professional track athlete and I'm sponsored by Nike. So you're never gonna catch me wearing anything else but Nikes. Um, I love their shoes, a lot of comfort, a lot of padding. Um, they're really comfortable. So a lot of the changes that we associate with traditional shoes, cushion, heel toe drop, we can actually accredit back to the running boom in the 1970s. Bill Barman was the other co-founder of Nike. In the beginning, Barman was primarily building shoes for track. They were lightweight, purely for performance. People were coming to Barman wanting to learn how to run, learn how to jog. A lot of those people that hadn't done that before started having problems with their Achilles tendon and their calf. Barman decided upon a half-inch heel lift based on what doctors were telling him. It was because they were trying to accommodate people that had worn dress shoes all their life. It wasn't from the athletes, it was more from the general public that needed a product that they could wear without discomfort. Beyond that, they started adding a counter, they started adding arch support. So they're adding band-aids to the effect of creating a problem with the heel. I think in today's world, fashion is first before performance. Is it gonna sell? Is it have that right look or appeal? Definitely put fashion first. Uh, I think fashion first is the way to go. You don't want to go outside looking all dusty and crusty and like some like dirty boots, you know? You want to have the nice, fresh, nice, uh, uh, whatever they call it back in the day, slicked up shoes. Without a doubt, I mean, like, how can you go outside in dirty white vans? Like, they have to be the most professional looking shoes you could get because. Obviously shoes are important and they fulfill an outfit and if your shoes don't match or if they're dirty, your outfit's incomplete. So what we end up with is this, this cocoon that encompasses your foot and strips away all the natural movement that's there for a reason. So you're buying technology and shoes to correct for problems caused by the shoe itself. Honestly, I've never really thought about my shoes that much. After getting sponsored by Nike, I kind of just like they're like the most popular brand or whatever. So I kind of am just like wearing what they give me. But now after having this interview with you, um, I'm really starting to think about it. And like, you're right. Like sometimes my feet feel a little crammed in there, you know, but like, I mean, now that I think about it, uh, I guess, I guess my dress shoes are a little crammy sometimes. I mean, I guess that would explain this bunion I have over here. It's not, it's not looking too good. But, uh, I don't know. It's just, I've never really, my whole life, I've always worn shoes. So I couldn't, I didn't even imagine that there'd be a problem with these things. So you're telling me this entire time, my feet hurt when I wear Vans because they're not even designed to fit my foot in the first place? Then why the heck do we even have shoes? There's a powerful sensory connection between the feet and the brain. The feet are actually part of how your brain sees movement. This makes perfect sense because in an evolutionary environment, you want to know exactly what you're stepping on. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it sharp? Is it detecting any kind of danger? Our feet are critical and they are absolutely one of the most important forgotten organs of the body. 
When you put your foot in a cushioned shoe, it's the same as putting your butt in a cushioned sofa. What you're doing is allowing everything to relax and get soft and deactivate. So what I tell designers is that design product that follows the foot rather than product that foot has to follow. So if you can design shoes and do that, then you're golden. We just published a study showing that foot muscles in the arch get stronger when you simply walk in minimal shoes. Oh, you brought some minimal shoes for me to try? Does that mean I gotta take off the Nikes? Fine. I take off these freaking dang nag, freaking uh, whatever they're called, dress shoes. I really hope you're right. I'm taking off my white vans for this. Oh my gosh, wow, look at the space difference. Look how much wider this one is. It's actually like the shape of my foot. Screw these white vans. What in tarnation? You're telling me I've been wearing a damn arrow my whole life? What in the world? Look how much wider this is. My foot could actually fix fit in this. No wonder I have bunions. I took off the Nikes for this, so let's see. Look how much wider that is. Cameraman, are you getting this? Look at this. It's actually foot shaped. And it's so thin. This thing is as hard as a rock. Ow. Oh my God. I need to make this switch for sure. I could go so much faster in these. I would definitely consider switching because the difference in space that is provided with these with the minimal issues is definitely worth considering. Definitely consider switching to minimal shoes. They don't constrict my toes at all and allow for natural movement that should always be there. It's always helped with running and getting places too. If people can realize that they can just strip away all this unnecessary junk and that they will immediately feel the benefits of it, that hopefully is the best message for our future. Free the feet! 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 Free the fe